error. I got to check you before you wreck yourself. Look at God. Give God praise for all the teachings of the fall, the faith of God and rebuilding our communities. And today we enter into a new series entitled LAG, L-A-G, Look at God. We've all heard, so is a man thinks, so is he. But this is the reality. Most of what we see is formed, or most of what we think is formed by what we see. What we look at is a major part of our walk of faith. Now, now I know someone is saying, but doesn't the Bible say we walk by faith and not by sight? And, and I'm not disagreeing with what the Word of God says, because we walk by faith, not by sight. But the reality of it is, as we walk by faith, we move according to what we see. And what we see is determined by the amount of faith we will actually release. Because if what we're seeing is negative, we will be confused and we will be held hostage to what we see. So even though we say we have faith, we're not living like people of faith. How often have you declared you got faith until something show up? to challenge your faith and you buckled under the situation because you really didn't have faith, you had lip service. Uh, come on, come on, come on. And my goal is not to raise up an army of talkers, but an army of doers. So I'm gonna challenge your thought process. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And faith without works is dead. Therefore, I must hear God's word to get faith, but my faith is increased when I see God's work. I got to activate my faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, church, just having faith is not enough. Not this season. Not this journey. For what God has in store for you, it's going to take more than you just saying, I have faith. If we were transparent in here, I'd have somebody to jump up who was on their way to divorce court and somehow the miracle worker restored your marriage and now your marriage tight and solid. I wish I had somebody that was transparent. You stood before a judge, knew you was guilty as sin, yet they let you go home because God is a miracle worker. I wish I had somebody off in here and sickness got in your body and the same thing you got killed your girlfriend, yet God killed you in that situation. I wish I had somebody that can testify that God is still a miracle worker. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Not only does David, the psalmist, the musician, say that God's a miracle worker, he says, look at God reverse their situation. They were facing a situation a large body of water and the enemy was coming after them once again and the water was high and they couldn't go through the water so the Bible says God reversed their situation what would have drowned them God dries it up God reverses their situation they were dealing with a water situation and God gave them a dry situation what am I trying to say what is David saying right here they said look at God he can reverse that thing around God can reverse that situation. God can reverse that problem. God can reverse that curse. God can reverse that dilemma. Whatever you're going through right now, look at God and start declaring, God, I know you can reverse it because you turn water to dry land. If you can reverse their stuff, God, I know you can reverse my stuff. I dare you right now to shout that God can take a ghetto boy and make him an astronaut. Oh, yesterday, I saw a ghetto boy with a 2.1 GPA. Now, he owns a aviation company, flying aircrafts all across the country. He flies Beyonce, he flies Jay-Z, he flies all the stars around the world. He graduated with a 2.1 GPA. He went before a judge, he got in trouble, and God turned his situation around. God reversed his situation, B. He went from thug to pilot, and from pilot to own the pilot whole company. He owned aircrafts. Now, don't tell me what God can't do. God your situation. You may be in trouble right now, but God can take your trouble and turn your trouble to a testimony. I wish I 
wish I had somebody, and you know you're not who you are right now. Who you are right now don't look nothing like you used to look. God reverse your situation. You went from no confidence to now your swag on TV. From bad to getting out of high school, now you got PhDs. From baby mama to mother. Jesus, Jesus. And then David says, David says here, he says, look at God empowered him to walk through what could have or should have drowned him. Or I pray I can get through this without shouting. That David says, look at God empowered them. Because I love this word empower because my desire is to empower an army to take the community. My desire is to equip you with the right ammunition to give you the right word. Not to get you emotional riled up, but to get you riled up in the fact that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. To get to the point where you're no longer walking around with your head down, but you empowered to take your life back. You empowered to change your destiny. You empowered to leave a legacy that's worth leaving. So David says, look at God. He empowered him to walk through what could have and should have drowned him. I don't think you get what I'm saying right now. The water was so deep and the water wasn't just deep. The water was raging. The water was rough. The water was in a situation where they tried to swim through it. You drowned. And they didn't have a boat. They didn't have a ship. They didn't have an ark. They had no way of getting through the raging sea. But God dried the sea up and let them walk through what was designed to drown them. What you're going through right now is designed to drown you. Those bills were designed to drown you. That divorce should have drowned you. That sickness should have drowned you. That lie told on you should have drowned you. When they stabbed you in your back, that should have drowned you. When your mama didn't show up, that should have drowned you. When your daddy didn't show up, that should have drowned you. When all hell in your life. That should have drowned you. That should have been your Katrina. That should have been your Addison. That should have wiped you out. 